Well, Chris, it is so great to see you again. I know it's been a while since we talked. How are things been going? I'm doing great. Thanks again for having me back. I know it's been a while since we've spoken. Yeah. How have you been? Uh, really, it's it's doing well here. Things are starting to open up a little bit. You know, it's it's, it's gonna be a process. But uh, I know uh, I didn't have a chance to post your your interview or our interview that we did. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm I think that it's gonna be a perfect time to get it posted um, as things are starting to open back up. And so, um, but, but it was certainly a pleasure having you and I'm excited for the Hallmark fans to get to meet you because I don't think that they may realize who you are. Yeah, and I mean, that's okay. You know, I'll, I'll get out there and uh, people will learn who I am. Um, I had a wonderful time doing uh, the interview with you. Like I said, I don't know if I would call it an interview. I think it was, you know, two friends talking. I, I consider it to be maybe more of a, like a video blog where we yeah. just get, you know, talk about what's going on in the industry. Um, I had a wonderful time doing it and uh, that's kind of, I guess, why we both look a little different. <laughs> <laughs> right, We're doing right. the update. Um, right. Yeah, it's it's been good. Things have been good here. Um, obviously still doing lots of cl- uh, courses and stuff like that. and. Uh, you know the industry started to open up again, so we got um, auditions coming down the pipe, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, I'm just super excited to uh, be down there. Well, I'm glad, and um, I'm looking forward to officially having you meet the Hallmark fans. Some people might, know. some of the fans, some of the really diehard Hallmark fans might realize who you are, but at least this will be a good way to introduce them. And so, well, Chris. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your, your backstory, kind of how you got into to acting? All right. Well, um, basically, I, I kind of see myself as an entertainer my entire life, right? You know, friends and family have always told me, hey, you know, why don't you get into acting and all this kind of stuff. But for me, I always just looked at it as kind of like a fantasy, you know, something that was just so unattainable. Um, and basically what changed my mind is I didn't want to go through my life. I know it sounds cliche, but go through my life thinking, you know, you only live once. Right. So I wanted, I I didn't want to live without any regrets, basically. Right. I didn't want to live with that. What if in the back of my head? So, um, I guess the whole thing started, um, about two years ago, my friend, um, told me about auditions that they were having for the uh, the movie Sonic the Hedgehog, the one that just came out, starring James Morris Dan and uh, Jim Carrey. And they were only taking 100 people. I think there was a thousand people that went through there. This was just for background work. Mm-hmm. And I ended up um, getting on there. And I would, it was just such an eye opener. You know, I kind of wanted to just dip my feet in, get a little feel for what it was going to be like. Um, on the third day of uh, shooting there, they actually asked if I wanted to do stand work for James Morris Dan, which was, I thought, incredible. You know, like I'm on day three of my acting career and uh, and I'm already doing standing work for, for um, high profile actors. Um, I guess the biggest turning point for me uh, was when I ended up um, being noticed by a director just doing background. You know, for me, um, I don't care if I'm doing background or if I'm the main actor. I go into these things and treat it like everybody has a very important role. So whether you're background or you're the main actor, everybody's got to work together to make that scene come to life. So I ended up getting uh, noticed by a director and I'll tell you a little story about it. Um, I got an email from uh, BCF Castings, which is um, the background castings agency. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came came in as usual. Hi, Chris, would you like to do uh, some background for an upcoming movie? And I was like, oh man, I was supposed to go to, uh, I'm supposed to go to Las Vegas for a wedding. My, wife's uncle was getting married it was very important to her so I didn't want to miss that right. and uh I had to decline well an hour later I get a phone call she calls me personally and she's like oh I know it's a little unconventional but um would you change your mind if this was an acting role and I was thinking to myself holy geez mm-hmm. my first acting role and like I didn't even have to go to an audition mm-hmm. so I looked to my wife and she's like babe this is this is something you want to do right and I was like absolutely she's like then go for it So I ended up uh, getting my first acting credit, my first acting role in The Last Bridesmaid. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was so happy about that. Okay. Um, 
So in terms of my training, you know, um, I kind of, my, my training kind of started the second I stepped on um, set doing background. You know, I was always watching people, watching the main actors, watching the cast and crew, just seeing how they kind of inner work uh, work. And I always found myself, whenever I was doing background work, I would either be getting a continuity role where I was on set for three or four days, mm -hmm. or I'd have a small feature where like they wanted me beside the main actor or actress. And I always took those opportunities to, you know, spark up a conversation you just say, how's your day going? You know, and get to pick their brain a little bit and see how they got their career started. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's kind of my informal training. Um, since then, uh, formal training, I've, I've been going to workshops, I do um, private coaching, mm -hmm. I'm in constant uh, scene study classes weekly. Mm -hmm. um, actually, earlier today, I was in a class. So mm -hmm. get, generally, once a week, I'm in a class. Um, I've done stunt courses, I do knife work, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff, private coaching, and that's on an ongoing basis for me. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. So now I'm curious. So you're talking about because you're you live in Vancouver, is that right? Um, I go back and forth. Oh, you go back and forth. So I have family in Victoria. Um, okay. Okay. So I'm back and forth. Okay. So but you're but you're in BC. That's that's yes. okay. Okay. So what are some of the places? Where, where are you training? Like who are you training with? I'm just I'm curious because I'm I, I'm pretty familiar with with a lot of the training places up there. So. Okay, so in Vancouver, um, I do private coaching with Sarah Jane Redmond. She's absolutely okay. wonderful. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, June B. Wild is a class I'm in right now. We're constantly doing scene studies. I'm on my second or third course class with her, right? So each mm -hmm. class or each course is four weeks or whatever. Right. Um, in Victoria, I've done a lot of work with uh, Jackie Casey and Natalie Krill. Okay. Um, for my stunt work, uh, I did a stunt course with Peter Kent. He was Arnold Schwarzenegger's stunt double for 15 years. He's a really nice oh, wow. guy. Yeah. I got a cool little demo reel after that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then my scene studies and stuff that I kind of circulated between those, those two people. Right. 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 Okay. Well, that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Sarah Jane Redman. I definitely know who she is. Uh, she is so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I got introduced to her by my agent. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, she because she's done, she's done Hallmark work as well as other work. I most of the people mm -hmm. that I have come in contact with, I usually get introduced to them through Hallmark, and then okay. I follow then I follow them elsewhere. Um, because she's actually, if I'm correct, I believe she's on siren right now isn't that, isn't that she good? is yeah yep. i actually i had an audition for uh siren and i i had a meeting with her before yeah i went into my audition and she's like you know what? you're gonna do great just relax yeah. you know yeah i didn't get the part but right. uh right. it's still a fun experience and oh yeah. yeah she does tell me about uh some of the things she's oh been yeah on. oh yeah yeah i i knew her her the first time that i knew her there was a show that was on hallmark um called cedar cove and she had and she she and um mike dopud um those two um were like couple like a couple on the show and so um mm -hmm. so yeah so it's 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 kind of cool uh to i i usually i usually know more about what's going on in canada than i do sometimes even in the u.s just because i have so many friends up in especially up in vancouver a lot of friends i've gone up there several times met a lot mm -hmm. of people and so so i'm usually pretty well connected with what's going on and and so that's that's why i was that's curious awesome. that's why i was curious <laughs> yeah 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 i, I love awesome. that now the first time i mean this, this this is something the first time i ever went to vancouver was right mm -hmm. after president trump was elected and you okay. can imagine that I have, first of all had people thinking I was going to Canada because because of who had been elected president. And I said, <laughs> no, I actually set this up before we even knew. It's and, not what you think. It's yeah, not what you right, think. right. So there was that. <laughs> and every single person that I met, all these, all my actor friends that I was connecting with them, it's like that was mm -hmm. always a big source of the topic. Okay, let's talk about president. Let's talk about your new president. Like, okay. It's like, so, so but, but it's good because it has it's 
lots of times what I've found, because I have some really good friends up there where politically we don't always agree, but mm -hmm. we find a common ground and we find yeah. that really, although we may be on opposite sides of the aisle, we are able to have a discussion where we respect each other. And we find out that we actually, even though we seem like we're polar opposites, we actually want, mm -hmm. the, same, we want the same thing. We want... Yeah. And that's a cool thing. I wish there are times where I'm just like, I would wish that our government could do that. Like people in our government could have those discussions. People could have those discussions because they don't happen that often anymore. So I know no, just... they don't. And everyone, you know, kind of keeps to themselves about it. And I know. sometimes that's not good, right? You got to be able to talk about these sorts that's of right. things. That's right. Because my perspective gets expanded, even if I don't agree with the person, but I listen to them. Sometimes that ch being challenged, well, I like to be challenged anyway, because it, because it mm -hmm. makes me think. So, so, yeah, anyway. absolutely. so that's, but, but I absolutely love the, I, I love Canada. I love everybody I've ever met in Canada has been just wonderful. Um, I have love. You notice our accents quite a bit or? <laughs> I mean, I do. If I stop and think about it, um, some it's only keywords, right? It's it's it, keywords. That, yeah, that's still yeah. What's funnier sometimes is when I've heard them so much in Hallmark and they don't have the accent at all, and then I meet them, and then I hear it, and it's like, oh, and it's and it's so different. It's 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 and, I'll, and so that so sometimes sometimes I'll key into that, but most but most but, but I it, it doesn't bother me because because I've I've lived. Um, I've lived down south, and so I think mm -hmm. when I was down south, I had, I think I actually ended up picking up a little more of the accent down south because I came back and people said you have this accent. It's like okay, I didn't even, you know, I couldn't hear it. Even my family couldn't hear it, but some of my friends and other people could hear it. Um, yeah. And and you know, I had a, I had a friend from England, so I um, we we talked lots, and I so I got used to um, the the British spellings, uh, actually, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, I sometimes have to, there, there are, there are actually words that I prefer to spell in the British way. And I have to remember, no, I can't do that. I'm in America. So I have to spell it the American way. Always interesting, but well, so the last bridesmaid <laughs> then that was your first like official credit that wasn't background. Is that, is that, is that right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, it was an SOC role, and um, I had so much fun doing it. Uh, Barry Levy, Rachel Boston, oh, Paul yeah. Campbell. Oh, yeah. These guys were so amazing and oh, yeah. so friendly. Um, it was just such an amazing experience, you know, yeah. getting a, a different perspective, and it just was the thing that started driving me even more to just focus on acting. Right. 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 Um, so now, did you know about Hallmark? Were you aware of Hallmark before, before you made this movie? Um, I knew a little bit about Hallmark, not much. You know, I knew it was uh, family oriented, and they like to sell a lot of holiday cards. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. No, I I hear you because you guys don't have Hallmark up in Canada. You don't. I mean, you have no. I mean, we, we get the we get the channels, uh, the movies sometimes through the right. Women's Network. Right. But um. Yeah, for the most part, we don't actually have a, a dedicated channel like online. Right, exactly. And and that's and that is just for me just the weirdest thing. You make all these movies up in Canada. Almost now it's a, it's changed a little bit over the past few years, but for the most part, still the majority of the movies that Hallmark does and that Lifetime does are made up in Canada. And then you guys yeah. can't even watch them for a while or, you know, sometimes depending on how things yeah, work. Only two, three months after it's yeah. been aired in, in the States. Yeah. It's, cr it's, it's crazy. I, I don't understand that. But then on the flip side, you guys have Canadian programming that either we have to wait on for a while or, really? oh yes, Murdoch mm -hmm. Mysteries. We get Murdoch Mysteries now. Now it's gotten better, but we do get Murdoch Mysteries, um, after you guys have gotten it um oh. we don't we don't um we've gotten it a little bit sooner the past few years so they've actually been bumping that up a little bit um but there are shows that i want to see that i can't like um there's a show nurses i know that you guys had up there um oh, yeah. oh, well, is that filmed in vancouver do you know or i'm not sure if it's filmed no it might be filmed um 
it might that might be Ontario or Winnipeg or something. Oh, Toronto or somewhere Toronto, out there. Something, yeah. something like that. East Coast, I, yeah. yeah, I I but I'm not 100% sure. I just know that it's filmed up in Canada. We can't get that. And it was very disappointing because I have all these friends that are in it. <laughs> so I can't watch it. And, and, they, yeah. and then uh, Hudson and Rex is another, another show that I have several friends that have done that. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. That's filmed over uh, St. John's, St. John's Bay. Isn't that, is that? Is oh, that uh, is Saint, well, just, St. John. No, St. John's. St. John's. Sorry, sorry. That's it. St. John. Newfound Newfoundland. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that is that show still hasn't made it. It's been like two seasons and mm -hmm. hasn't made it. So sometimes <laughs> I'll be seeing these shows and I'll think I want to watch it, but I can't. So I do understand. I mean that. I mean as far as that goes. I mean I understand. Sometimes you guys have those shows and I sit here and wait for them and think. When are they going to come and, and yeah, no, it's funny because I mean, primarily all of my background that I've done has been Hallmark. Oh, yeah. You know, I was in, right. I was in uh, the, the story of us. I was in okay. that romance. Oh yeah. Um, sailing into love. Oh my goodness. Uh, love and sunshine. Oh, that was goodness. with, um, Oh, that was such a fun one. That was Danica McKellar and right and Mark and, Declan. Uh, Mark Declan. Mm -hmm. Yep. I got to I got to work right beside Mark and and have a little chat with him. Oh, he's uh, awesome. Yeah, they're they're oh, both yeah. great. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, that's 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 cool. Yeah. Oh, those are. You've gotten to work with a lot of big and really big Hallmark stars, very well known Hallmark stars. Then. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. have. I mean, I've been very fortunate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, my last movie, my my last movie, uh, Beautiful Place to Die, that was starring uh, Jesse Metcalf and Sarah Lynn. Yeah. And uh, I got to do a bunch of awesome action sequences. Um, cool. And it was so much fun just, you know, running around with Jesse Metcalf doing all these, <laughs> like, we're running around with guns. Like, I felt like a little kid again, you know, like, I was just having so much fun. And that's the other thing I'll mention, actually. Um, you know, I don't know, I, I didn't know a lot about Palmer before this, mm -hmm. but um, I didn't realize they had a murder mystery series that, they, that they're that they doing, right? Oh, my God. oh yeah. And uh, working with Jesse was just so much fun. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that part is so perfectly written for Jesse. I mean, there could be nobody else that could play that part. I mean, that is, I that is Jesse's he, role. He does a great job. <laughs> I, I have been... With, with Jesse Metcalf, I honestly think he is incredibly talented, but sometimes I think Hallmark has struggled to find, sometimes, not all, but sometimes it's finding the right project that really shows off his skills. You know, well, he's a bit of a bad boy, right? He's kind yeah. of edgy. Yeah. He, he's not as polished as, right. as some of the other um, Hallmarkies or Hallmark right. punks, if you want to call right. them. <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, this, like you said, this role was perfect for him. Oh my goodness! And uh, getting to experience that with him was was pretty yeah. eye opening. Yeah, yeah, because because I think that he, I know that when I've seen him in interviews about about the Martha Vineyards mysteries, it is that action. He loves that action, and and he's going to do that action. He oh, he doesn't care. He's going to do the stunt work. He doesn't, you know, he's like, he's, oh yeah, absolutely. he's going to do it. And, yeah, and that's what's that's actually that's actually what sparked me to go do a stunt course was after I did. Uh, Okay. that that movie with them right yeah it was just so much fun oh. and i heard through the grapevine that they're going to be doing um a lot more of those i think oh yeah um, Martha's oh. Vineyard's Mystery. i think it, it it could be an eight-part series oh yeah it is, who knows maybe i'll have uh uh something in there who knows we'll see. that's right that's right uh yeah well i could definitely see that because it was a big show i mean and i just i was you know, you know, Jesse has been on the show Chesapeake Shores. You're probably familiar with. Yeah, Chesapeake that's filmed Shores. up island on Vancouver Island in right. um, Lee, no, Parksville. Parksville, yep. I believe. Right, 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 right. And and with that, what that's been like Jesse's big role with Hallmark because that's he's he's one of the main characters. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's just like I feel like that that show. De well, it limits him. I'm not saying he isn't great. He is wonderful in it. I love his music. I love his acting. But sometimes you feel like, man, you know, you know, once I saw him in Martha's Vineyards, it was like, oh, that is what Jesse should be doing. You know, nothing against Chesapeake Shores. I'm fine with him going back and doing Chesapeake Shores. But man, they need to figure out how to get some action in because, yeah. because he well, is you know, so good. 
I mean, Mark, or, um, Hallmark's doing uh, these murder mysteries. I'm sure, you know, you could find you could find lots of places for them. And oh, I think even oh, yeah. me too, right? Like, oh yeah, definitely. I've, I'm totally into the action. Uh, right. When I did that, I had, I had a lot of fun. And I think um, it would just broaden Hallmark's horizons if oh, they, yeah. you know, ventured off into some action. Oh yeah. All that sort of stuff. Because that way you're tapping into an, a completely different um, demographic, right? Right. Well, and that's the thing. It's, it's okay for it to be edgy, but not edgy. So, you know, you don't have to show guts and gore and blood and all that you don't have have to show that it's exciting enough i was i i mean as far as um, i mean i love the mysteries i've been all about the mysteries since they started and have been one of their biggest supporters and so the mysteries have evolved so much and they have you know they're and, but I would say of all of the mysteries, Martha's Vineyard Mysteries had the most action. I mean, of any. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's I mean, lots of cool oh sequences oh and my stunts. And, yeah. 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 And and I think part of that is because you have most of the mysteries, the female is a lead, is is mm-hmm. the lead, de- either the lead detective or or is the the lead woman that's trying to help out the detective and the detective doesn't want the help and there's nothing wrong with that i love that dynamic i I mean i absolutely love those but it was cool to have something just a little bit different because you have that you have the male lead and he's very action you know he's doing all that action stuff and the ptsd stuff that oh yeah i mean that was just incredible I i i love seeing hallmark tackle that so that's i mean that's great that um I mean, I, well, for that specific, uh, for a beautiful place to die, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Jean was the director on the first one, okay. and uh, yeah, he's a he's a he's an amazing guy. I've been on a few movies with him. Okay, yeah. he was actually um, the gentleman who who noticed me. Okay, and okay. Subsequently, getting me that first role, you know, right, right. He's right. a really good director. He knows uh, he's got a vision, and uh, and he finds it right. That's cool. So, yeah. so you had the last bridesmaid, and then what was? There was, wasn't there another Hallmark movie that you were on or not? Or yeah, I did The Last Bridesmaid. I did A Beautiful Place to Die. And then I also did Love and Store. And that okay, was with Alexander it. Breckenridge and Robert Buckley were the main actors. Right. Okay. That's right. And that one, we just, we just saw that not too long ago. Um, yeah, that came out uh, in January. And actually, uh, that was my actually that was my first speaking role. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, I actually, yeah. now that I see you, um i actually remember i can i can remember because it because it was it like you were like the stylist or something yeah i yeah. was a stylist yeah 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 yep. <laughs> uh that movie what what was interesting about that first of all now i always love hallmark i mean i'll just say you know 95 percent of the time i come away from a hallmark movie saying i absolutely loved it it was great it was you know it was fantastic well done you know once in a while i'll watch one of the kind of like eh, it wasn't the best it wasn't the worst and, and then there are there, there are a very select few that were very hard for me to sit through very mm-hmm. select they just and, and and usually i just keep quiet about those i just you know i don't go around and say well i couldn't stand this <laughs> I, I i just i won't do that i'm i'm not like that um i will always find something positive about it even if it wasn't my favorite um i will always find something that i liked about it and and um i I always say that a quote-unquote bad hallmark movie is better than just about anything else out there on on the other networks and so i'm you know i'm i'm fine (laughs) with that i'm fine with that um yeah but love and store i First of all, it was I was not terribly familiar. I kind of knew who the leads were, but I wasn't terribly familiar with the leads. Um, mm-hmm. And then the whole idea of a shopping network, I don't even, I never watch shopping network. So I thought, okay, this will be a cute movie, but you know, it's not going to be anything great. And I was just, I was blown away by that movie. It actually ended up being... I, I loved it more than I thought I would. I thought that um, the two leads were just fantastic. I thought the storyline was very unique and mm-hmm. really, really enjoyed it. Um, and then um, I live with my parents. And so my parents were in their 70s. And they, um, 
they often watch the Hallmark movies with me. Actually, my mom and I are, we're the ones that really watch the Hallmark stuff. And we, and the mysteries, those are our things. That's what we really watch together. And we try to figure it out together and all that. It's like, you know, who done it nice. and all that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so it's always interesting because when my mom watches the Hallmark movie, she doesn't have, um, she doesn't have really anything invested in it. Lots of times it'd be, it'd be like, I'll be watching out for my friends. Oh, there's my friend over there. And there's my friend, you know, it's like, okay. And this, and I know all the behind the scenes stuff. She's just watching it like a fan. So when she comes away and says, it was a really good movie, she really enjoyed it. Then I know that it's not just me saying it, but my mom liked it too. So it's like, okay, my, yeah. just, she can be, she can, she's, she honestly loves almost almost all Hallmark movies. She almost loves, she, she's pretty good about that, but she can be a little bit, you know, a little bit critical at times. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's good because, because that even if they're come away of like, like, for example, actually the la the, the movie that Hallmark had tonight, she liked parts of it, but there were parts she didn't like and the parts that she didn't like, I liked. And so it's like, we, you know, but, but, but that's always, oh, yeah. Good. yeah, but that's fine because that's shows that everybody's different and you perceive things differently. And sometimes I'll be saying, I'm not sure if this movie was that exciting. And then she'll say, Oh, it was really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, like me and my wife will watch a movie and I'll be absolutely floored by it. And then, yeah. you know, she might just say, I right. didn't even watch it or I didn't right. enjoy right. it. Or right. Whatever. Oh yeah. Right. Right. So, so so yes yeah, so i do remember you in that and so that's that's really great that um mm -hmm. that you've had this good streak of three hallmark movies in a row and those are like your but but they're ones that the fans would be very familiar with you know the last bridesmaid is supposed to get a sequel um they, really yes it is supposed to get a sequel that was um They've been in serious talks about that. That is, they, I don't know if they officially announced, like they've been talking about it and they've been saying, we're trying to get a sequel together. Um, so, hey, maybe. Yeah, you know what? There was something about that movie. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was very exciting to, right. uh, for that to be my first acting role, yeah. but there was something about that movie, just the atmosphere and the yeah. buzz that was going around set. Right. That was just you know, everybody could feel it and everybody just loved to be there. And, right. um, I could see that happening. I could see a oh, sequel yeah. coming out of that, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause that's, that's one I'm, I'm friends with both of the leads. I've never met them in person, but I'm, I'm friends, Rachel and Paul where we, I've interviewed them many times and mm. they're just, they're just fantastic. I, I mean, it's, it's great. And, um, and so, yeah, there was something. I don't know. There's something special about that movie. And so, um, and I know that it means a lot to Rachel because that was, that was an idea that Rachel and the screenwriter, um, they both. Yeah, she was, yeah, she helped uh, write that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was her kind of, I kind of her idea because she said something about uh, she's, she's not you know, her friends are all getting married she's not getting married and it's okay it's like she's okay with that it's like i don't have to be married you know i can go and have a great life even if i have to be keep being the bridesmaid it's like no big deal yes, totally. <laughs> and so that was yeah that was it was a cool one so so mm -hmm. hey so maybe you know hopefully we will continue to see you the nice thing about hallmark is they are and you're probably, you would probably know this too. Hallmark does seem to be very loyal to their actors that have worked with them. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, I mean, all of my, all of my credits have come from Hallmark, yeah. right? Right. Uh, so they must have, I must have something that they like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. They're, they're. Actually, and, I'll tell you, I can tell you a little story about um, the movie Love and Store that I was on. Yeah. Uh, when I went to go audition for that, I auditioned for, two different parts right okay. i auditioned for just to play the photographer and also mm -hmm. to play um what was the other one the tour guide okay so i go into this audition and um i i mean i thought i was doing good but obviously I, it was actually my very first audition so right. um i didn't get either of those mm -hmm. but they ended up asking me to read for the part of frank I don't know if you remember who Frank was in the movie, but anyways, okay. I was, it was it was Robert Buckley's um, partner for okay. all of the on 
show things, right? Right, right. Um, so I read for him. Long story short, I didn't get the part. But the mm -hmm. point is, is that, you know, they saw something in me. Yeah. And uh, uh, a week and a half later, I get an email saying, well, we'd like to offer you the part of stylist. So I went in auditioning for three different parts, didn't get any of them, but I right. did get the, the, the stylist, you know, right. so that was really exciting. Just yeah. super appreciative of that. So That's great. That That's, yeah. I always, I always love, and, and you're not the first one to tell me stories like that, especially with Hallmark. I mean, I've got, I, you made me think of, there was, my goodness, I think there was an actress. Yes, there was an actress that I interviewed that they ended up changing a part like it was supposed to be like the 60 year old man and they changed it to like a 30 year old female or something like that completely oh. rewrote it because they liked they they I, th I think they even had her go out for it which she thought was really strange and they liked what she did mm. with it and they rewrote it for her oh. <laughs> and, and so now that's that's the industry though right like yeah. things can just change on a dime you never know oh yeah Definitely. Well, and, and what I love too, is that uh, speaking, I love the fact that Hallmark d has a lot more diverse cast than they used to, you know, that's always been, mm -hmm. it's always been an issue. And I understand that a lot of people, they're quick to jump on, well, Hallmark needs to be more diverse and all this. And, and, it, and it's like, do you realize that, because there was a period of time when Vancouver or especially, well, BC was not as ethnic ethnically diverse as it is now you know there has been definite mm, change yeah. and it's been and, and and it's and it's great because i can even tell the difference because i've been up to vancouver um what is it now three or three times four times four times i guess it is now um in mm -hmm. the past few years and i can tell the change when i go up it's like oh this has changed you know there there are a lot more ethnicities in the city it used to be basically you know they want to be more diverse well their pool to choose from they don't have a lot of diversity there and now they do and now Hall, and now hallmark is including a lot more diversity in their cast and i love that i love oh absolutely i mean the last bridesmaids when i was on i, I played a grooms uh, i played the groom mm -hmm. my entire wedding and my bride were all you know dark skinned and it was right. it was really cool to see and oh. i mean that was even the that was a little bit of the vibe too you could tell like everyone oh, yeah. was just happy and everybody was happy and you know, there was no like right you know it's just very kumbaya <laughs> right <laughs> right great right right and and i and i love that i and, and i also love the fact that hallmark doesn't do diversity just because they want to say we're diverse you know sometimes exactly are, they just get it yeah because <laughs> there are those yeah. show, there are those shows sometimes even with network shows you'll be watching it and you'll think oh we know why this person is here because they want to have this group. They've got to represent this group and they've got to represent because sometimes there'll be a character and you'll think, and that character's only there for this short period of time. And, you, and then they're gone. And they're mm -hmm. like, why were they there? Well, because they wanted to say we had, you know, this ethnic group or we had this group you know, and, and you can tell, yeah. and, it, and sometimes it could be, I mean, granted, networks are getting better about it, and I think it's good to have the diversity discussion. I think that's great. I love the fact that it's out there, but I like to have it happen more organically, and I think Hallmark um, has done what, what you're talking about is it, it has happened more organically. It's not like they're pushing it and they're making Well, exactly. It. Right, right. And so... So that's great. And yeah, it's not like they just put uh, an Netflix person out there for two minutes and then, <laughs> okay, we did our part. <laughs> right, right. That, exactly. I would not want that. And I'm glad that Hallmark has not caved into that because there's been the pressure. There's been, there's been the pressure. I've, I see and I hear things. I, I hear a lot more things than probably sometimes even Hallmark does just because, um, People will come to me because they think that I know everything about Hallmark when I don't. They think I work for Hallmark. <laughs> you know, there's all these, <laughs> there's all these things that happen. Um, and also, I run a, uh, I help out with a Facebook group. Um, I'm, I'm. There's a really big Hallmark Facebook group um, that it's like, I think it's like fifty six thousand people now or something like that. Fifty three thousand something. Um, it's a huge. <laughs> 
And so we have lots of administrators and I got brought on as administrator. So I really see, I see what the fans think. Uh, their unfiltered thoughts, definitely, you know, yeah. which, which is actually, which can be good. It can be negative for the most part. They're very positive. You know, we just, we just, but yeah. But I mean, a lot of times people just want to argue for the sake of arguing. Yes. Right. And yes, it's, it's true. puts a negative right. connotation on things. Right. And, you know, I think if everybody didn't have a computer in front of them, maybe they, they wouldn't be like that. You know, it's, Oh yeah. Sometimes people just want to argue just for the sake of arguing because they're bitter about their day. So right, exactly. I, it, whenever stuff like that happens, I just, I completely ignore it. And, yep. Yeah. You know, I'd oh, rather, yeah. I'd rather stay positive personally. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I could tell that about you. I mean, that's, and that, um, that is a great thing for, I think, especially for anyone that wants to work with Hallmark, you know, sometimes people wonder, well, why did so-and-so, they only did one Hallmark movie and they never came back. Well, it could have some, you know, we don't know. There's lots of, there's lots of things that go on behind the scenes, but what I have discovered is the people that return to Hallmark. I mean, I can't speak for the people that don't return to Hallmark, but for the people that return to Hallmark, invariably it is that positive attitude, like what you have. Um, mm -hmm. it, and, and, and there's just that, that family atmosphere on set. I hear that so much. They want to be there. They enjoy coming to work. It's not, it's, they're they're they and, and i love and i love hearing that and i hear that from the crew so much that the crews the hallmark crews are like the best i'm i'm sure oh absolutely yeah people genuinely like i found being on set people genuinely want to be there yeah. it's like uh you know like a connection kind of like in an unspoken way yeah. you can feel the vibe i yeah. you know like i can't really explain it but you can just yeah. feel the vibe when you're on a, on a hallmark set right and what's cool is that comes across as a viewer that comes across uh, in these movies. I mean, you can tell. Totally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There is no doubt. You can tell that they really enjoy it. And sometimes you can, there will be those moments when it's like, you know, that was real. I mean, like you knew these two are friends off, you know, they, they become friends or they've been, they've known each other for years and they're finally getting to work together. You know, there's all these different stories that I hear. And mm -hmm. you can, and it just comes across. There is that vibe that comes across. It's not the same vibe, nothing against Lifetime, but it's not the same vibe that you get when you watch a Lifetime movie. Now, maybe they're really, maybe they're, maybe some of those people are very happy to be there too. I'm not saying they're not, but there is something about those Hallmark movies. And there's just that, and, and you can't really define it. I know, but it does no, come can't. across. It's, it's like, it's like a warm feeling really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like I said, I, I mean, most of my stuff has been Hallmark. Yep. And um, thus far, they've been so great to me. You know, they've given yeah. me lots of opportunities. I find myself in front of the camera more than more than most. Right. And uh, yeah, I just continue to be me and be the bubbly guy I am. And right. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully, I'll get to work with Hallmark much more. That's right. Well, that's well. And what's cool is I think that the more experience you get with them the more opportunities you're going to get because that's what i see all the time oh totally yeah all the time and and so so that's so that's great so um so now you said that you work another job besides besides acting is that is that right or yeah so i'm in the i'm in the trades i've been in construction for oh, okay. almost 16 years wow wow yeah that's partially where i get my tan i'm outside all the time <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, and you said for sixteen. So you can't be that old. You don't look. You you look. I will say you look young. You look young. I will I, say. I don't know if I should divulge my age. You don't have to. You don't have to. But <laughs> I don't uh, care. I think it's on my own BB. I'm thirty six. I'll be thirty six this month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm. I will. Well, I will. I will be 46 in June. Oh, really? Your birthday's <laughs> in June as well? Yes. Are you late June or early June? I am middle, actually the middle of the month. June 13th is. Um, okay, so you're Gemini. Yeah. And, cool. and, then, and then I have a daughter who was born on my birthday, so we share a birthday. Um, hey, that's very cool. Yeah, so she, she'll be turning, my goodness, she'll, she will be turning, um, 17 um in june so awesome yeah so 
<laughs> so yeah. Um, so, but no, but honestly, you, I will say, I figured you, I was going to say you were about 30. That was what I was going to say. So. Oh, so. thank you. <laughs> so. That's very funny. <laughs> so, so, no, seriously, that is what I'll I was take thinking. It. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, but, so, so construction that that's so, so then during, during the time where we find ourselves now, where a lot of things are shut down. So you're still working? Uh, you're still able to? Uh, yeah, I mean, work has started to slow down a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, my construction work, which is okay, right. you know, because it kind of presents a unique opportunity to focus even more on my acting. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so that's yeah, right. it actually works out a little better for me, I think. That's, well, that's a good way to think of it. Well, that's, that's, I think it's, I always think that, actors who have another skill that the, I mean I, I know there's there's different schools of thought but I think it's always a good idea mm -hmm. to have some other skill that you can fall back on just you know, just in the event that something you know you you need to pay the rent or <laughs> and you don't have the money or exactly. whatever yeah and yeah. and the work the line of work I'm in right now actually presents a unique opportunity I'm working with a company that really supports me in my career okay so uh, you know, I work full time there generally, but not right now because of the pandemic. But um, if there's ever a time that I need to sneak away for an audition, they're super supportive. I don't have to give, I don't have to give a week's notice. I can just say, hey, I got to sneak away. I got an audition to do. And they're like, you know what, do what you got to do. Right. And it's been like that for a, a year now with, with wow. no problems. Wow. That's, yeah. Oh, that's, ex well, well, that's good. I, I, I just think that's, I think that's wise and um so yeah i mean it's good because i'll always have something to fall back on right, right like i got right. my ticket and uh, i'm a journeyman and all that sort of stuff right, so right. there's always something for me to do if, if this doesn't pan out but right for me um acting doesn't even feel like a job really it's yeah. it doesn't even feel like a hobby it just kind of feels like what i was meant to do i enjoy doing right. it and uh, yeah i just continue to feel that way that's great so so i'm curious then when you're on set do you ever feel like putting your construction uh, uh skills to work at all i'm just curious if that ever comes up um you know what I, it may have it may have helped yeah. on the, the the set of flip that romance I and mean, that was where that's i was true. noticed that's true. and that's i was true. on a construction i was on a construction crew with um I guess yeah. her name was jules i can't remember the main actress's name um one. julie gonzalo Julie, yep, yeah, Julie Gonzalo. Uh, so I was on her construction crew, uh, and you know we were walking back and forth with different tools, and yeah. we were moving furniture, and I was running a tape. Yeah. So it was funny on, on that movie. Uh, Martin, he he liked what he saw, and he asked, "Okay, can you just come up before the main actress? I just come down the stairs. I'm going to put a camera in front of your face. I just yeah. want you to." push it out of the way like you know because yeah. they were doing these these scenes where uh, they'd have a different uh film uh crew come in to to talk about the the big contest that they were having between right. these two houses right so yeah just little things like that you know right. i always find myself getting the, the privilege of doing oh that's cool yeah i was and yeah that, maybe the construction thing helped <laughs> never know that's just true i because i was thinking about um are you familiar with the actor uh, Ryan Pavey? Ryan Pavey, no, not yet. Okay, okay. Well, he's he's a big he's he came from the soap opera world, and now he's totally Hallmark. That is his. He actually left soap opera. He 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 got his character got killed off so that he could come and do Hallmark. On that's basically oh, wow. yeah, basically that's he wanted to leave, and then so they killed him off so he could come and do Hallmark exclusively, and. Nice. He has, I don't know exactly, but he, but I talked with one of his directors on one of, one of the Hallmark movies that he did, and he was trying, he was actually getting in and helping with the set and stuff, like, he shouldn't have been doing it, but he was doing it. They had to, like, tell him, okay, you can't do this because we can't get, have you getting hurt, but, but he was getting in there. Yeah, like well, that amongst other things, too, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, like you know, if you start moving the cruise, <laughs> cruise stuff, then it's like, well, do we really need the crew? Right, right. Well, so everybody, yeah. everybody has their specific job that they're <laughs> supposed to do. This is true. Right. 
Well, I, I think really know what those I think and that was a that was a very low budget one. There, I mean, like even mm. it was one that Hallmark acquired, so it wasn't and it wasn't originally Hallmark, and then Hallmark acquired it. So those are usually a lot more low budget, and I so it had something to do with he had some he has some kind of construction experience or carpentry skills or something like that, and so he just started yeah. jumping in and do it because people were. I think there was some there was some. I don't. I think they were a little shorthanded sometimes. I think is kind of what I. Think you know what? When I do when I do background work because I come from a construction background and I'm, I'm yeah. and there's sometimes there's a lot of downtime, right? Sometimes yeah. you're just sitting in a tent and you're watching all these people work right. around right, you. Right, right, around. right, right. I'm just sitting like, oh man, I would totally love to help you. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> right, to, right, right. just to take up some time. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what he's talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, yeah. It's but but that but well well it's interesting. I mean, I love I love your backstory. I love the fact that now you've been doing all this homework stuff, and of course, I know things are shut down right now. Um, so, are you basically using this time just to focus on on acting? Is that what you're mostly doing during this time? Yeah. Basically, yeah. I mean, you know, the whole industry is shut down. Um, I've I've heard to the grapevine that they're going to be doing a lot more self tapes. Yeah. So uh, what I've done is I've basically built a, a studio in my oh, cool. dining room. Oh, that's cool. Hey, <laughs> that got, works. I've got I got three lights set up. I've got ring lights. I've oh my got goodness. Lots of backdrops, different types of backdrops. I got a good camera. Yeah. Um, you know, everyone seems to be bored. <laughs> but not me. I'm out there like constantly running monologues. I'm doing all sorts of stuff just to keep my mind focused, right? And yeah. just using this as an opportunity to, to really hone in my craft. Right. Well, that's cool. That's because, cool. you know, I feel like when this is all over, scripts are still being written, right? Oh, yeah. And they're going to need actors and actresses to fill those, fill those spots. Yeah. So I think once this all blows over, it's going to be a huge blow up. I think you're exactly right because I, because I know well what well, what we talk about and what what I've been noticing is like with Hallmark okay so Hallmark tries to do roughly somewhere between 30 and 40 Christmas musical mu movies a year you know they want to mm -hmm. do yeah so well, on top of all of their other movies too right, right right but Christmas is always their big big season mm -hmm. I know that they don't have very much that is actually there's only one movie that they have filmed that we know 100 percent sure is christmas there's been mm -hmm. and you see that we're we're not half we're not quite halfway through the year but usually by this time because hallmark has been doing a round the clock you know round the whole year filming christmas movies they filmed Absolutely. i mean i mean this christmas movie that they filmed they actually started in December of last year because they filmed it in Vienna, Austria is actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so they filmed it and then they finished it up in January. And that's their only official Hallmark. I mean, I mean, they might have other ones that they're going to acquire, but they, and they probably have a mm -hmm. lot that they've been getting ready for, but I, but I think you're exactly right. Once this ends, they're going to have to, they're going to probably, want people that can jump right into a role right in you know know probably probably know their lines basically have their lines already all memorized and that they can just jump right into the role i have a feeling you're exactly oh, yeah. right and and it's going to be some i could see them doing some very some very long hours and trying to yeah i mean they're gonna have to make up for a lot of lost time Yep. And there's going to be a lot of hungry actors and actresses yep. out there. That's and, right. Uh, I'm actually just super excited because, yeah. you know, I just, I just, I can just, you know, one of those things you can just feel, you can just, you yeah. just know that it's going to be like, right. it's going to be insane. Oh there's yeah. Oh, yeah. So much stuff yeah. happening. Right. And everybody, you know, like, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Oh yeah. You know, constantly going through all this stuff. So, right. You know, I just, I just can't wait. I'm just so excited. I know. Yeah. I, I, I am, I will say from where I am, I am much more encouraged because, um, of course you probably, you're, you're probably, you probably know Washington state is where everything started as far as the U S goes. That's the first official case happened in Seattle, the Seattle area. 
And I live in Washington State, so of course that's been, you know, we, we've been dealing with this for a while now. And what's been encouraging is Washington and California have really cracked down hmm. and they cracked down early and they're actually beginning to see that what we've done is beginning to help. I mean, it's just small, you know, it's very small, not that there won't be any more problems, but compared to the rest of the U.S., Washington and California are starting to reap the benefits of what we've already put in place. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it is good. And, and I don't know, um, how are, how, how are things going in, um, like up in British Columbia? How are, yeah. How are things going? Um, do you know what? I try not to, like, I try <laughs> not to watch, um, the news as much right. as I can because right. I don't want to form my, like, I'd like to form my own opinion basically. Right. 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 So, you know, um, from what I've heard, things have, are, aren't too bad here. Right. Um, I think Alberta is a little bit worse off right now, but yeah. in terms of BC, you know, we kind of, when the whole thing started, we really kind of jumped on the ball and yeah, to shut big box stores down, schools mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. So, right. um, I think we, I'm not saying we nipped it in the butt, but we, right, right. we got a pretty good jump on it. So it's not right. too bad. Right. Cause I think you guys only, I think you guys shut down schools really just a few days after we did because we've now had schools shut down for three weeks yeah it's been about three weeks yeah and then the schools that were in the areas that were really hard hit they were actually shut down a few days even before that but then oh, really? yeah but then the government I, mean, I was i'm also a substitute teacher um mm -hmm. and so i was actually subbing at a high school when on the day that they said okay this will be your last day until um they were saying the end of april now they're saying the beginning of may um and here they're saying it's probably going to be closed for the rest of the school year it could and be it will be probably september for for canada it yeah it's they're kind of it, it they're not 100 percent sure they're not saying that yet right now they're saying the first part of may i think it's like I don't know, May 4th or something like that. Um, mm. But, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, our, I, I've, I've been relatively pleased with how things have gone in Washington. I mean, things aren't perfect, but I mean, I've been relatively pleased here, the way that they've handled things. And, um, and especially when I see what's happened, when I hear the stories of what's happening in other parts of our country and, things yeah. and there's some crazy stuff there's some crazy stuff um <laughs> and and although it was really crazy and i i mean when you started to hear what was real we we did we didn't do very well when it first started the way it all happened and the way it all happened was not good but it seems like we've jumped on it so you know we just keep taking it one day at a time <laughs> Yeah, um, that's all you can do, right? I guess you know when you're in something like a pandemic. Right. You know, this is the first time I've ever experienced oh, yeah. one of these, and um, yeah, yeah, I'm just just kind of do what they say, and yep. Hopefully that'll be enough. That's right. That's right. And and uh, so, but that sounds that's good that you are you are keeping it. Yep. You know, that's really great that you're using the time. I'm using the time. Um, I mean, I've been getting some more interviews that I sometimes wouldn't get. There are some people who've been too busy. I mean, I couldn't believe the, that I got to interview these two leads, lead actors. Um, I, I, the two actors, I don't know if you know who they are. Uh, Michael Rady was one of the actors. No. And, okay. He, and he is, he is, he is big time. He was in a movie called, um, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Oh, I know that. Movie. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, that he was in that. So he's oh, wow. he's had quite he's had quite a career. So it was amazing that I even got a hold of him. I would think I was the only one that just just worked out. I've been trying to interview him, and then um, his co-star um, was Natalie Hall, which I don't you probably mm. even I don't she she is. You know what? Yeah. I saw I saw that you just posted on your website. And I was, yeah, I was yeah. reading it a little bit actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's. So she's, she is from, she actually is from Canada. Um, she lives mm. in LA now, but yeah, but uh, that's what I've been doing is I've, and I've got a lot of, I'm reaching out to people that 
I wouldn't have maybe normally reached out to just because I'm thinking, hey, you're sitting around there doing nothing. I'm thinking to myself, you're sitting around there doing nothing. I might as well try to do an interview, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> so you know what? That's that's the like as much as this sucks, it pretty it presents a pretty unique opportunity for creative right. minds like you, me, or oh, yeah. any other actor, actress, oh, yeah. musician out there because it allows them to just kind of sit back, mm-hmm. focus on what they're doing. Yeah. You know, like I was um uh, we just finished doing a Zoom meeting with yeah. my agent, okay. and uh, I got to meet a director or a casting director from, um, I think he's in LA, okay. and he does most of the casting for General Hospital and, and some oh, other things, right? okay, yeah. So I got to, we all got to pick his brain for like 45 minutes, and you know, if That's this sick. didn't happen, then like, like this, if this whole thing didn't happen, yep. then I wouldn't have had that chance, right? Right. Oh, Yeah. Oh, I've, I've so been, opportunity for people. Yeah. I, I've been amazed to see the creativity that people, I mean, even, even the late night shows, I don't watch, the, oh, yeah. I don't watch the late night shows usually, but I actually turned it on. I'm watching it. I'm thinking, Hey, if the late night shows were like this, I might actually, this is, this is, <laughs> this is just, it's everything stripped away and you just see them in their house and they've got people yeah. calling it. and it's, it's, it's actually kind of fun because yeah i've been watching a uh, little uh trevor noah's things he's been doing from his house and i think yeah. they are so funny during this yeah. pandemic he's just you know putting light on the situation yeah. that's what you have to do exactly yeah it's a pretty dark time but i mean as a creative person it's kind of my job to keep right. people happy. Right? right. Exactly. Right. Right. So, so that's, so that's been fun. Well, it sounds like you've kept yourself busy and I've, Oh yeah. And I've been keeping myself busy and, um, and I know that it's, it's heartbreaking when you see, when you see and you hear all the stories that are out there. I know that can just be overwhelming. And then all the, all the political stuff, I have to weed out all the political stuff. <laughs> everybody yes. wants to make everything political it's like can we just <laughs> throw the politics out and realize we're in this together and we can exactly come together and just forget about politicizing everything there's no reason for yeah. that yeah the, the 20th century is quite the tangled web yeah right. <laughs> they found a way to keep everybody so confused yes oh yeah <laughs> how true each other how true i know because i'll read something somewhere and i'll think that's really bad but then it's like i'm learning that may not be the whole story and nope it usually is just one yeah. side of it or even one little piece of it you've got to go and search exactly. around oh, i know history's written by the victors right so <laughs> right unless you do some of your own digging you're just gonna you're just listening to somebody's opinion right 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 well okay so well i think i think chris that was really just about I mean, I think that we covered quite a bit of ground, which is great. I mean, I, 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 I do that in my interviews. I mean, as you've probably seen, my interviews are a little bit different. That I, I, I've, no, I've, I like them. They're very personable. Yeah. I, um, I don't know. I don't, to be honest with you, if this was like, okay, so here's the first question, blah, blah, blah. Here's your second yeah. question. Right. I don't know if I could handle oh, that. Oh, I know. I know. I, I like the, the person, the personality. You bring. Oh, Yeah. And that's what I like too. And and this provided a unique opportunity because it's been and a while. It was a, gra- it was a great chatting with you. It's like I've 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 thought about this interview a lot uh, over over this time. And so thank you for your patience. I appreciate that. And that's not a worry. <laughs> yeah, like I said, lots of lots of auditions are coming in right now. So um, I'm sure you guys will get a chance to see me. Oh, definitely. Well, we will look forward to it. And thank you for your time. And um, and I'll be sure to post, uh, and for the people that are, of course, watching this, I'll be sure to post all of your links and everything so people can find you and can follow you and all that. I'll be sure to post that at the bottom. Yeah, that's that's great. So, um, Ruth, I just want to thank you so much for uh, doing this blog and everything with me. I think it's a great opportunity for people to learn who you are as, as well as me. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, obviously my socials are uh, the real Chris Wood, and uh, you can check me out on Instagram or Facebook, uh, whichever. Just have a view, and also check out Ruth's um, socials, obviously. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> but, uh, Thanks. Yeah, That's it's nice. been an absolute pre- uh, pleasure well, speaking good. with you. So.